In this video, you will learn how to use Blender's automatic weights function to automatically rig your mesh to a valve armature. Usually, when you attempt to use the automatic weight option, the mesh will warp around the bones because that is just how the bones are set up. If you want to rig something to the ankle using automatic weights, you not only rig the ankle, but also some of the leg. And that's not what we want. Now the first thing you want to do is duplicate both the mesh and the armature and rename them. In my video I called the original files Orich Spoopy for the armature and Orich Flash for the mesh. Now the custom ones that I will edit are called Custom Spoopy and Custom Flash. The armature is called Spoopy because skeletals are Spoopy. After you duplicated the armature, you have to delete some of the unnecessary bones. Some of which are the attachment bones in the elbows, at least for Left 4 Dead 2's bandage particles. Then you also have some helper bones in the elbows and some in the knees. Just check some bones that you don't necessarily need and delete them. You can still re-rig them afterwards manually if you so desire. Now one add-on that you will need to make this entire thing way easier should already be installed in Blender and it's the Copy Attributes menu. Since we're going to modify the scale of the bones later on, it's going to scale up this custom mesh which is a ball. When those little balls are scaled up, you can pretty much no longer see your models, because all you see is balls. Go to User Preferences, in the Add-ons menu, search for Attribute, and you will see only one add-on, the Copy Attributes menu. Turn it on, and then save your user settings. Now in the Armature Pose mode, of our custom Spoopy armature, pick any bone. In the Bones tab, underneath the outliner, scroll down to Custom Shape. Delete the SMD Bone Vis, cause that is the ball that we don't want. After you deleted it, you can see that the bone has now been swapped back to just a stick. Press A to unselect everything and then press A again to select everything. The bone that you last had selected, which turned into a stick, should still be your main selection. If not, just select that one again as your main selection while having everything else also selected. Then press Ctrl and C to bring up this attribute menu. In the Copy Attribute menu, select Copy Bone Shapes. This will turn all the little balls into sticks. Now for the actual interesting part. Normally every tip of any bone will have a base of another bone. If you were to use automatic weights on a default valve armature, it looks at the bone as where is the tip and where is the base, and then it will calculate the rigging around the base to the tip of the bone. But since our bones are usually all just sideways and scattered all around and rotated, it doesn't actually know where the bone is supposed to end. So that is why we need to fix this. Now to easily identify the tip and the base of any bone, go to the armature tab on the right side underneath the outliner, scroll down to display and select octahead. You have one short thick part, which is the base, and one very pointy part, which is the tip. The very pointy tip part needs to align with the base of the child bone. In our case, the tip of the foot bone needs to be at the thick base part of the toe bone. Select the base of the toe bone, press Shift and S, and then press Cursor to select it. This will put your 3D cursor onto the base of the toe bone. 
then select the tip of its parent, in this case the foot bone, press Shift and S again, and then Selection to Cursor. This will snap the tip of the foot bone to the base of the toe bone. And this process needs to be repeated for every single bone. Sometimes you have bones just like the toes or the fingertips which don't have any children. But the bones are still pointing in the wrong direction. So what you can do is just select the tip of those bones and just manually move them away from the base while still covering the mesh. Now sometimes you are unable to snap the tip of a parent bone to the base of a child bone because you have more than one child. For example, you have the clavicle bones which share one parent. To select the bases of both bones, press Ctrl Shift and then cursor to select it. This will just put the cursor in between all of your selected bone bases and then the tip of the parent bone just goes right there. Also, in the case of Left 4 Dead 2, you have one rather important helper bone which I did not delete. The left and right arm ulna bones. They don't have a child, but they are used to help in the forearm rotation. Now what I did in this case is basically just using the ulna as a child of the forearm bone and a parent of the hand bone, even though it's technically not a parent of the hand bone. But we need it. After you're done with moving all the tips of parent bones to the bases of the child bones, your armature should look something like this. Select the duplicated custom mesh in the outliner, drag it out underneath its armature so that it doesn't have any parent anymore. Then drag it back onto your freshly modified armature and in the set parent to window, pick with automatic weights. Now since we deleted some of the helper bones, like the knee bones, elbow bone and in my case also the wrist bone, you might have to manually fix those later in or not delete the helper bones and try to work with that. After you applied the automatic weights, you're basically done. The mesh has been rigged. You can now just check if all the rigging is actually correct by just posing the armature around. After you check that all the rigging is right, you can unparent the mesh from the armature like you did before, then back onto the original armature, this time in the set parent to window, just select object. Pick the correct armature modifier. Post the original unmodified armature again to see if the mesh follows the bones as they should. Anyhow, this concludes this tutorial. If you need more help, enter the Dead for Mods Discord server. There are many people on it helping everybody else out, me included. I also have my own Discord server, which is kind of inactive, but from time to time I post work in progress pictures of the mods I'm working on. But you can check it out if you want. Goodbye.